Often when we reflect on our relationship with God, what we see is compartmentalization. We separate our spiritual life from other parts of our life, like home or work or recreation. Before God, however, every aspect of our lives is equally sacred. What we are missing is an intentional plan to live this out. A trellis is a tool that enables a grapevine to get off the ground and grow upward, becoming more fruitful and productive. God raised up local churches as structures, trellises, that will help us grow upward and deeper with Jesus. This may include midweek services, worship, preaching, small groups, and ministries. Spiritual disciplines are personal trellises that help us abide in Christ and become more fruitful. It's a kind of scaffolding to build my life with God. It is an intentional, conscious plan to keep God at the center of everything we do. Spiritual disciplines provide structure and direction to intentionally remember God in everything we do. The goal is to be with God and to love Him in everything, 24-7. Most Christians develop their spiritual life in an unconscious and unintentional way. Reading the Bible in the morning for a few minutes, attending church and small groups weekly, giving money, praying at dinner, etc. Mostly passive. The invitation of this session is to take a step to develop your own personal disciplines. The key word here is intentionality. Otherwise, we find ourselves unfocused, distracted, and adrift spiritually. We won't grow in our faith without intention. We need to take steps and discipline ourselves in certain practices. We cannot earn God's love. But there are certain things we can do to help us grow in God. God has provided ways for us to do this. Jesus' example His example is life in abundance. It is not just life after death, but here and now. In all he did and taught, Jesus conveyed that our spiritual life takes place in our physical reality as well as in the heart. His practices were prayer, worship, reading the scriptures, solitude, rest, sleep, long walks, enjoying nature, enjoying close friends, service. It only makes sense that we do what he did. These practices of Jesus have been recognized for centuries as the core activities of the spiritual life. In the same way that a runner or a pianist is equipped to compete in a marathon or take part in a concert, after hours of practice and training, spiritual disciplines free us to live each day with the easy yoke and light burden that Jesus spoke of. Disciplines do not earn us favor with God or measure spiritual success. They are exercises which equip us to live in the presence of God, and God works with us, giving us grace as we learn and grow. Spiritual disciplines intentionally create a space in your life where you allow God to form your inward life into the character of Christ. Spiritual disciplines, strictly speaking, are activities carried out to prepare us indirectly for some activity other than itself. We exercise them not because of the discipline itself, but because of a longing in our heart for what happens while we are busy practicing it. Our desires and thinking become centered around God. We participate in the discipline But only God can create the chains. Making disciplines the focus is what got the Pharisees off track. They were so careful about Sabbath-keeping or even tithing from their spice racks. 
but their relationship with God was lost. It's not about the disciplines, but the relationship of interacting with God, abiding in Christ, and living according to the Spirit. It is not uncommon for a musician to sit down in front of a new piece of music and play through it without the hitch. It seems easy as if it requires no effort. Yet, the freedom to play with such skill comes after years and years of disciplined practice of the piano. This explains the effect of daily disciplines. We do not practice the piano to practice the piano well, but to play it well, for the music that is created. To excel in anything in life, discipline is required. This is true of disciples of Jesus. Effective discipline is not drudgery, it is delightful. Of course, training has difficult aspects, but the hard work pays off. Just watch a master pianist and you'll see that he or she is not straining to do well, but enjoying the music. We're meant to celebrate as we practice disciplines for growth in Christ. More important than our disciplines is the attitude or spirit we bring. In other words, why are we doing it? The primary requirement for practicing any discipline is a longing for God. Dallas Willard said, Lord, please put salt on my lips that I might thirst after you. If God is the great longing of our souls, He will become the pole star of our inward beings, and soon our minds will return to God as the needle of a compass constantly returns to the north. Spiritual disciplines are like wires that connect us to the power of the gospel. Spiritual disciplines provide a structure to invest time and energy into deepening our relationship with Christ. Spiritual disciplines are places in which we become open to interact with God and celebrate His presence. Spiritual disciplines create a space where we can hear God speak on a deep level. The Spirit reveals our hearts to us, our motives, our thinking, our desires. Disciplines help us to approach life as Christ did, think as He did and then quite organically act as he did. The spiritual discipline does not form you, but as we engage in practices, we experience life with God. Our desires and thinking become centered around God, not on doing spiritual disciplines. Apostle Paul used phrases such as being in Christ and with Christ more than 200 times to describe this union. For transformation, we need to connect with ourselves during disciplines. Many of us live lives marked by denial and superficiality. Disciplines do not change behavior, but connect our inner motives and needs with God. This connection brings a change of heart or transformation through the work of the Spirit. When I have a commitment to Sabbath, rest, and different ways of cultivating my walk with Christ, I prioritize differently and become more aware of my limits. The implications of how my time with God, my time with myself, and my family will be affected by my choices can become life-changing. It is not the work we do and the strength of our effort that leads to this spiritual change. But instead, it is the work of God's Spirit in us, as we engage with Him through disciplines. The Spirit uses them to lead us into real life, to become a new kind of person. In some disciplines, we need bodily habits to engage our minds and heart with God. For example, practicing solitude and silence have the effects of making us less hurried and more attentive listeners which equips us to love others better. The result is, love your neighbor as yourself. We do the connecting, 
He does the perfecting. We need the vision of Christ, inviting us to apprentice ourselves to Him and learn how to live our whole lives in His kingdom. There are different categories of spiritual disciplines. Disciplines of abstinence are designed to help us remove destructive and unhelpful things from our lives, acts that force us to stop, wait, remove, or eliminate. Disciplines of engagement are intended to build the right kinds of attitudes and habits into our daily lives. Disciplines of abstinence or self-denial These are ways of denying ourselves something we want or need in order to make space to focus and connect with God. Solitude Refraining from interacting with other people in order to be alone with God and be found by Him. Solitude is completed by silence. Silence not speaking and to be in a quiet place in order to quiet our minds and whole self and attend to God's presence. Also, not speaking so that we can listen to others and bless them. The result is deeper obedience in loving one's neighbor as oneself. Matthew 22 verse 39 Because we are more attentive. Fasting The act of fasting may or may not include food. It is a choice of abstinence of any appetite in an effort to deepen one's relationship with God and to enhance prayer and intercession. Going without food or something else like media for a time of prayer. The fast may be complete or partial, for example, fast one meal a day, fast coffee or sugar. The practice is... How can I be content while fasting, or how might I be using food and eating to satisfy a desire that only God can fill? Sabbath rest. Example in Genesis. A planned day or time set apart for rest, study, worship, prayer, fellowship, etc. To rest in God's person and provision. Secrecy. Serving Christ and others. His church and the world for His sake, with no personal recognition, not making our own good deeds or qualities known, to let God or others receive attention and to find our sufficiency in God alone. Submission Many people accept Christ, but fewer actually turn their lives over to Him as Lord. Submission is allowing Jesus to be fully and completely master of one's life in every way, not asserting ourselves in order to come under the authority, wisdom, and power of Jesus Christ as our Lord, King, and Master. The question here might be, what am I like when I do not get what I want? Only as we say no to self-indulgence, a space is created to say yes to God. And then we live freely and lightly. Disciplines of engagement. Let your divina and Bible reading. Trusting the Holy Spirit inspired words of scripture as our guide, wisdom and strength for life. Related disciplines include Bible study and scripture meditation. Study. Memorize scripture and expand your universe of biblical study helps. Worship. Engage in corporate worship and include worship in your own prayer time. It is the openness of the heart that guides one into the presence of God, the awareness and the longing for His holiness. The result is a deep desire to glorify the Lord, the most important thing in our lives. Celebration Practice being grateful and thankful both in our relationship with Christ and with other believers. Express encouragement and thankfulness to others. Jesus often celebrated life with his friends as well as communities of people. Service. Give your time to care, love and help others as an expression of Christ's love and grace. Jesus served people from a heart of compassion. Prayer. 
take deliberate steps to pray regularly and with purpose. Praying God's word through the Psalms is a good way to increase your prayer vocabulary. Fellowship Hebrews 10 says, Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. These are all ways of connecting with God and people, conversing honestly with them in order to love and be loved. Confession Practice of surrendering to the love, grace and authority of Christ regarding sin. Confessing your sins to trusted people who will pray with you and be spiritual allies. The daily examine. The daily examine helps us to contemplate our lives on a daily basis or even over longer periods of time. God is not only in the Bible, He is a reality in our everyday lives. The examine helps to become aware of His presence in life's mundane moments. Christ Jesus practiced disciplines, and this was crucial to the peace and power that he lived with. Look at Jesus in the Gospels and how we can learn from him to de-stress and live a joyful, peaceful, and fruitful life. There is no complete list. Any activity that helps you to grow your reliance upon the Spirit of Jesus might make your spiritual disciplines list. The challenge before you is for you to pick two or more and grow in that. For some it can be hiking in nature, fishing, doing art, listening to music, playing an instrument, hosting friends, etc. What is the purpose of the spiritual disciplines? In physical exercise there is very little meaning in jumping jacks, jogging or squats. They are just motions and muscle contractions. Their purpose is in what they produce, fitness and strength. Likewise, spiritual exercises are means to ends. However hard we try, we cannot change ourselves. They are activities we take upon ourselves in order to give God's Spirit room to change us. My attention cannot be focused on myself and whether I am changing, or how am I doing so far. When self-improvement is my focus, my spirituality is about me, not about God. Personal transformation is the Spirit's work. The discipline's meanings are found in the growth they create in the soul. It can include an increase in one's ability to delay gratification, resistance to the temptation of immediate fulfillment. They free us from distractions and wrong attachments. Receive insight. To hear God's voice or one's own inner voice. Dallas Willard says, Spiritual disciplines are not righteousness. It is wisdom. Jesus will lead us into the practices that are best for us. Practicing spiritual disciplines is a reaction to Jesus' invitation. Come, follow me, spend time with me. 